Welcome to Weld.com. Occasionally we do some stuff in here in the classroom that gets into some mathematics. Everybody likes that. Um, I also wanted to mention some of the projects we do. We've done some horseshoe stuff. Here's some short horseshoe artwork that student made. Old time weld, we find that interesting because it's got a etched section of all the multiple passes of 12 inch stainless pipe on a 6G. Some CNC plasma artwork that we do. I actually created that for a friend of mine for Oklahoma Lady Riders. That image is part of their, uh, their riding group. So let me get some stuff on the board and we'll get to crunching some numbers. Be right back. Welcome back. <clears throat> got a little project we've been working on. We got guys around here that like to make a lot of wood racks. And instead of just cutting a wood rack off straight sides, I've seen them just make the sharp points up there. I like to put a tarp over my wood at times. There's nothing worse than coming in on a cold and wet night and you go out and get wood and it's all wet and six inches of snow on it. It's nice to make these little pup racks to keep them in the garage or even put one right next to the fireplace. I've got a bunch of shorties that I use for my smoking wood and stuff. And I, I like breaking these up where we're creating kind of an effect where you're breaking up corners so that if you do wrap it with a tarp or <clears throat> I just don't like sharp edges. Anyway, it kind of creates a problem here. On these small ones, we've got an 18 inch base. We're 12 inches. Customer says he wants this 12 inches wide. He cuts his wood a little longer than that. So how do you make this equal parts around here? If we're gonna, if this is a 45 degree, this tube cuts at 22 and a half degrees. So does this one. So does this one. You put them two together and you got a 45. But how do you know? I mean, he said he wanted 12 inches. What do we do? Well, we can take 12 and divide it by three pieces, and we just came up with four. We cut all, each of these four, that's not going to come out to, if, if this one's four, this one's going to have to be way longer. How much longer? Well, we did a problem here not too long ago, and we'd said that <clears throat> square root of two, Pythagorean's theorem, we came up with this constant number, and it was 1.414. Okay, so if we did that, then our piece, this one could be four, this one is going to have to be 5.65 inches, and that's fine. We just have to cut one, we have to cut two of them off at 5.65 and one of them at four inches. I realize that's not drawn to scale, please forgive me. So, you know, does that make sense? Well, not if I'm doing a bunch of wood racks and I want to cut them all the same length. Okay, so now we got to do some ciphering here. We got to do a problem solve. So, you know, I'd be cutting a bunch of them at, at 5.65 and one of them at four. And they, you know, we could do that. And that maybe that's how you want to do it. But this customer says, no, I want them all equal. I want every one of them equal. So <clears throat> we, We've got to figure out what are the equal parts here. Well, let's do something real quick. Let's take our original dimension of four. We know that this is 5.65 and let's subtract four from it. And we get 1.65. Can we divide that in half? Which would be 0.8. 2, 5, can we do that and then add that to 4? 4.825, huh? So if we made all of our parts point or 4.825, is it going to come out to 12 inches? We're going to have to test that. And here's how you do it. Let's say that that's 4.825 this way. How much of a run are we getting out of that? That's like the rise. This, we're, we're not, that's the hypotenuse side of that, but that's not what we're going to get as far as this dimension in here. See, now there's a question of what are we getting in here? What is the inverse of 1.414? It's 0.707. Okay, so if I take 4.825 times 0.707, I'm going to get 3.4, that's 6.8, and we said we were going to change that to 4.8. We add those up, we're only going to get 
11.6, we're still a little short. We want to make that up in gap. We're using small tubing, thin wall tubing, don't think so. Let's use, uh, let's just guess the number five, okay? And we'll use these numbers again. There is another way that you could take these known values and do an algebraic equation, kind of like we did on the Pentagon layout with the scaling something here. But let's use some other numbers here. Let's do this. Let's say that we're just going to cut them all five, okay? And then we're cutting 22 and a half degree angles on them. Five times 0 0.707 get you this distance here, 3.5. We do that again on this side, 3.5. 3.5 times 2 is 7, plus 5 is 12, and that's what the customer wanted. A couple of ways to figure it out. You can use trig. You know, I, I just, you know, when I'm playing around with stuff like this and I know it's a 45 degree angle, we did a deal where I said, remember 1.414 when you're cutting a brace, that's how long it's going to be. Okay, now we're using another number that we know how long it is, <clears throat> but how much distance are we actually getting in, a, in, a, in this right here. So remember the 0.707 distance as well. Remember that number. Those two numbers when you're working with 45s get you some cool stuff here. And we figured this out fairly quick. We can go out there and set our saw at five inches. We're cutting them all the same. We're gonna cut 22 and a half degree angles on everything. We're probably gonna jig up and start slapping these parts together and they're kind of fun to do. I hope this helps. I'm sure there's going to be some comments and questions. Please forward them to us. We'd be glad to answer them. Thanks for watching Weld.com.